Familiar Landscapes by Lawrence Robb. Morning's sudden and extravagant green seems to suggest the higher, whiter waves of the air. What moves through the flurry of these first leaves, floating and falling beyond everything I am able to see. Against that brightness, a flock of blue, a single yellow iris creaks on its shaft. How persistently the eye resists the familiar. So easily finding itself content among its accustomed walls, the expected trees and avenues, that it fails to see them and will acknowledge only what has been changed or lost or taken away. The mountain darkens with the sky and the quiet lake holds onto light as long as it can. That's the way we looked at it one summer, the shadowed lane the silence of the house. Sometimes a few words are all we ask for, and it's, it's too much. down your throat, you couldn't talk. To not to be able to breathe for yourself, the young doctor told my father, is the worst thing to take away from anyone. Even the most familiar landscape opens itself to the moon's cold inspection, and is changed. Dreaming all night, waking early, I am unable to remember what appeared essential only a moment ago. An image, perhaps, a fact that asked something of me, just because it was there, now lost altogether in the day's advances. This absolute blue against which the wind displays these clouds as they drift and gather, shred, rise, and are carried away. I relate personally to this poem and its overall message that we often do not realize what we have around us until it is gone. Although in this poem the narrator is referring to his dying father, I personally relate to it in the way that I have changed the way I look at the world since I found out I will be moving. Before this news, I was going about my life monotonously and uncaring, and as Lawrence Robb put it perfectly, I was content among its accustomed walls. However, now that I know that I will be gone, I am starting to notice the things that make me smile and try to make the most of the rest of my school year. However, uh, I like that by sharing the character's story, Rob helps the reader truly see the simple things in life and what's around them. On top of that, I can relate to the narrator's confused wandering after the major part of his life is taken away. Although I may not yet have lost a loved one who is very close to me, as he has, major aspects of my life have ended. An example of this is when my soccer season ended. I was so used to going to practices every day with the same people that when it was finally over, I didn't know what to do with my free time. I wandered and tried to amuse myself, but I always felt like I was missing something. I feel like Lawrence Rob truly understands this feeling and captures it in the third stanza. But rather. Overall, I relate to this poem in the fact that the meaning is not about the loss itself, but rather about the thoughts and feelings that accompany it, like, the re like restlessness and a changing perspective. One literary device that I found to be intriguing in the poem Familiar Landscapes by Lawrence Roth is the symbolism of the clouds to represent life. In the last line of the poem, the author describes the clouds as they drift and gather, shred, rise, and are carried away. This represents the course of life. During everyday life, the clouds drift and gather, meaning they are going along in their usual content way as the majority of our lives are spent. However, as death nears, they start to shred, being torn to pieces, just like our perspectives when, do when we realize that something is lost. They rise, meaning they finally see the world as they should have all along, only to be carried away by death. This adds meaning to the poem by encompassing the message of a changing perspective while tying in the theme of loss. Another literary device used is imagery. This, the author uses a lot of visual imagery of the morning, clouds, mountain, and the lake. These allow the reader to put themselves in the poem and see the poem in their head as it unfolds. However, this does, not, this does more than just please the reader. It gives a background story to the message so that we are not only given a statement about it. Instead, it makes the poem interesting and lifelike, allowing the reader to connect more with it. The imagery also gives us a portal into the perspective of the narrator and how that changes as the 
life changes. Through the imagery of the morning, we see how the narrator notices every small detail, showing us what is needed to do this in our lives. In the second stanza, it gives us a glimpse into how he glimpse into how he perspects how he perceives the world when he is spending time with his dying father. In the third stanza, it shows the extent of his loneliness. Finally, a third literary device used in familiar landscapes is personification. The moon is personified when the narrator says, even the most familiar landscapes open the, opens itself to the moon's cold inspection. This is describing the moon as inspecting, something an inanim inanimate object just can't do. This simple phrase, however, gives deeper meaning into the poem. It shows that it is the night or darkness that changes the way we perceive things. However, this night, or moon, is meant to represent loss, meaning that it is with loss that the world appears differently. This is, how, this is one of the messages of the poem, that loss changes perspective, which was shown through the personification of the moon.